let's get into some shite. Greetings, my friends. Welcome to the Out of Tune Podcast. Thank you for joining me on a Monday, and it's good to be here. Hey, did you hear uh, last week, did a little uh, interview with a uh, good friend, Mike Poole. And uh, one of the things we didn't talk about, now, if you've listened to my podcast, the one that I did, we had a previous podcast, I had a previous podcast before the Out of Tune Podcast, and I'm not talking about apocalyptic. Now, that is this podcast. Apocalyptic and Out of Tune Podcasts are the same podcast, just different name. I renamed the podcast. I don't want you to think I'm doing a totally different podcast. If you're searching around for Apocalyptic, in fact, you can right now go to the internets and type in apocalyptic.com. You'll come here to Out of Tune. That's because they're the same podcast. But I used to do a podcast called This Epic Disaster. Uh, some of you uh, who follow me here might know of it. Um, did it with my uh, former uh, podcast partner, Sherry Brown, um, who I've been talking to recently, by the way, should I mention? I don't know. Uh, we had a falling out, but we've been talking. Uh, we're going to get together this week, I think, maybe next week, hang out a little bit. Uh, we're not going to do a podcast together, but at least we're kind of, you know, we mended some fences. We're talking, we're chatting, we're trying to, a lot of, which I... <laughs> I kind of know it's all based on stupid misunderstandings. People are dumb. We're dumb. Why do we do it? But we wasted a year and a half um, just because we didn't talk and we didn't air things out. Uh, we finally start. We finally sat down and talked. We aired it out. Everybody feels better. So we're chatting a little bit. We used to do a podcast. Some of you know of it. And Mike, Mike Poole, who I interviewed last week. Um, he was, uh, he participated a lot. He wrote some stories for us for our haunted shows and, um, he, he participated in some zooms. He watched me drink a six pack of beer one day. Uh, I don't know if that was the smartest thing I ever did, but, um, I, <laughs> I celebrated my birthday. I can't remember which, which one it was. It was 60. That's right. It was when I turned 60, I drank a six pack of beer. Um, on the 6th of some month, or what, that would be April. No, it must have been May. I don't remember because the show was 666. How stupid. Anyway, we did it. And I drank. And you know what? I didn't even feel it. I barely got buzzed. Uh, it used to take me like four beers in college to get a buzz. And I, I had six and I wasn't even going. Anyway, Mike, uh, he hung out with us on that Zoom. We used to refer to Mike as uh, Koozie Mike, and uh, some of you might remember. Everybody used to have a nickname on this epic disaster. Koozie Mike uh, was on, he was a regular uh, um, listener. And we called him Koozie Mike because he sent us some koozies, you know, little can koozies, beer can koozies, uh, Coke can koozies, soda can koozies, koozies, pop, wherever you're from. And, uh, you know, the koozies, uh, I used to call them Coke condoms. I don't know. It's a little thing you put on your cola to, to keep it cool, um, and especially in the summer. And so he sent me some of those, but they're, it's like a little tiny kilt. It's actually a, an actual small, really small kilt with the pleats and everything. And it's in tartans, and it's got a little uh, sporin on the front. Very cool. I don't know if he still does them. Check and see. He used to uh, sell them for charity. They're, they're really cool. Um... But I noticed on his uh, website, somebody posted a picture of one that they had, maybe two, and they were on a wine glass, which I never thought of putting them on a wine glass. But when you do that, they have their own little stand, the little wine glass stand. It looks so cool. It's almost like something to put in a jewelry case. So um, I thought that was an excellent idea. So I ran out to my local Goodwill. I bought three uh, little wine glasses for a dollar each, brought them home, put my koozies on them. Now I got three little kilted koozies standing right here little koozie kilts standing right in front of me a little purple one a little wallace kilt and uh wallace tartan and a little green one army green no one cares but me i thought i would tell you 
thanks to Koozie Mike. And thanks for him for doing the interview. We had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, I didn't write a lot of stuff down today. I have some things to talk about. I hope I can remember uh, everything I want to talk about. I do want to say, you know, I have a listener line. 678-348-0008. I have fun uh, when I talk to, to the listeners. I don't know if there's ever been a podcast that interviews the listeners. Do, have, do you know of one? I don't. It's always famous people. Um, and, you know, there are interesting people that aren't famous. So I don't know. I'm kind of open to uh, interviewing even listeners if you've got an interesting story to tell. If you think, you know, if, if you don't have anything to say, uh, don't contact me, really. And that's okay. You don't have to have anything interesting to say. But if you do, if you've got an interesting story, if you've had an interesting life, if you have something to talk about, you know, reach out on the listener line say, or send me an email. We'll set up an interview. I'm told I would love to talk to listeners. It'll be fun. We all get to know each other. <laughs> uh, I'm also uh, looking at other people, celebrities, and uh, semi-celebrities, just people uh, in interesting professions. So I've got some stuff that I'm lining up. I hope this year is going to be more of a year of interviews for the podcast. Those will take place on Thursday. We'll have Thursday shows. Monday will be our regular show like this one right here. And again, I'm going to give out the listener line, 678-348-0008. I have that line set up. If you want to participate, all you have to do is call that line. You could leave a message. If you leave them a message, I will play that message on the podcast. Uh, you could text a message. So far, most people like texting. That's either way is fine. Text a message, and I'll read that. If you want me to, I'll read it on the, on the line, you know, so you could participate. You can also send me an email, rick at autotune.com or... Uh, through Facebook, I got a Facebook page. We do have a Facebook page. Do we have a? I can't remember if we have a group. Uh, I don't know if there's a Facebook group. I hadn't really come up with a name uh, for the for the group um, of people of our listeners. We need to do that at some point. But anyway, there's a lot of ways to get in touch with me and do so. And uh, let just let me know what you think of the show. And please share the show. Here's what I if you've forgotten, I do have some stickers and I got some left. Uh, these are out of tune podcast stickers. They're really cool. And you get, I don't know, how many do you need? One, two, uh, you can get them free. All you have to do is share the show. Just sh when I post it on, you, if you want a show to share, go to the out of tune Facebook page and then just find a link and share it. When you do that, you can either tag me, tag, tag the podcast or contact me and just say, I shared the show. I would like a couple stickers. All I'm going to do is ask for a mailing address where I can send the stickers, and then you got free stickers. I'll send them to you. I don't care. All you got to do is share a show. Does that make sense? All right, today I'm drinking my Bingle tea, my Bingle spice tea, Bengal spice tea. Do you like that? Oh, it's like the best tea ever made. Um, a little bit of cinnamon. It's very cinnamony. If you don't like cinnamon, you won't like this tea. Uh, I feel like it's the best tea of all teas, and um, Bengal spice it's just a lot of spices in there, and it's hot and warm. And on a day like today that's all frozen cold, this is like the perfect thing. I'm going to slurp my tea. Do you mind? Oh, nice and warm. Feels good. Uh, today I was reminded that um, um, people don't want you to be who you are or who you want to be. For no other reason than they believe their God doesn't want it. I was reminded that today. I would hate to have, it's not judgment against the people, but I would hate to have uh, any kind of uh, a God or a director or a superior, uh, any kind, uh, that um, was, was not a nice being, was not the kind of person that would... Um, <laughs> be accepting of the creatures he supposedly made. I I don't know what it would be like. I wonder what it's like uh, to have a God uh, that is less tolerant than me. Uh, a God who is less forgiving than me. I don't know what it would be like uh, to have a God who is just overall 
more judgmental than me. Me. I'm like, I'm, I'm nobody. But yet, apparently, I'm a, I'm a better forgiver. I, I, I'm a better at tolerance and loving. And, and I'm a better at, at, I'm better at accepting and not judging than, than a lot of people's God. Whoa, how far down the ladder is that God if I'm that much better than, oh, I don't even want, no wonder they're mad. I hope you don't, I don't have a problem with anybody who believes in a God or has a relationship with a God. He's fine, got no problem. But if your God is that much lower than me, I look, I, I'm sorry. Here's, I would say, if if I'm that higher than God, I, I'm open, you I'm I'm taking applications. You're welcome to worship me if you would like. If you need a new God, here I am. I, I'll take the place. But what I would recommend is maybe examine the one that you got. See if maybe you're totally underestimating this this God. Maybe you don't know this God better as much as you think you know this God. Because if I'm better at, than your God, I I got. <laughs> I think you need to reconsider. Please. I have some uh, health issues this week. This week I talk about it, and that's another thing, man. I mean, you don't why you don't want a god with health issues, do you? Uh, I my whole life I've been pretty healthy, never had much uh, difficulty. Certainly nothing really serious. I don't think. Uh, but I've always had some, um, um, uh, just, I don't know. I, I was talking to my wife the other day about it, like in my 50s, I think. I think I had some digestive issues, probably from stress, owning a business. I had, uh, well, I, and this was totally self-diagnosed, but I had IBS. You know what that is? Irritable bowel syndrome. My stomach constantly rumbling. It was embarrassing. Sit in a meeting and your stomach's talking the whole time, trying to take all the attention for itself. There are other issues. I didn't have anything serious about it, but it's one of those things like if you need to go to the bathroom, you got to get up, you got to go immediately. So, I mean, I kind of struggled with that in my 50s, uh, but it's, I don't know. I think the stress and everything has kind of dropped away. I haven't felt those kind of issues in a long, long time. My, 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 I feel like my stomach and all my that stuff has is, is kind of gotten over it. So it's easy to just kind of ignore it. But one thing, I'm really bad at taking care of myself as I get older. And I, I don't know. I, I'm going to say I never was really good. I'm not a health nut. I'm a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian. This year I've been a vegetarian 31 years. I believe that's right. Um, which I find kind of interesting. Now we'll say a couple years ago I started eating fish. So I'm, I'm no longer a vegetarian. I'm a pescatarian. Um... It sounds like a religion, by the way. So I I don't know, but I've been pretty healthy. So I've never really struggled with a lot of really... And I'm lucky in that regard. I know a lot of people who have constant things, and I feel bad. I feel... I, I really, really uh, uh, feel for people who have to struggle with stuff like that all the time. But I know, and you're, as you get older, you're going to get... I'm going to get things. I'm going to have things. I'm going to struggle with things. I'm going to get... Someday I'm going to get something. That's the. That's it. That's the thing. That's the one that's going to do me in. Most likely, probably. I mean, it's going to happen. It happens. This is what you, your body's made to, to destroy itself. If you if you don't think so, you're fooling yourself. It's what... it's. It happens to everyone. So around Christmas time, I started feeling pains. And I... Um, I, I, I don't know. I ne stuff I never felt before. I was like, what is going on? My body. And you know, immediately, I was just like, oh, this will, this will pass. This will take care of itself. It always does. But I started feeling things I never felt before in ways I never felt it, and um, and it got worse and worse. And, pro and from uh, like before Christmas, a couple weeks before Christmas, uh, until now. I've had uh, nonstop pains, and um, the last week, week and a half, I guess, it started getting better. I've been, it's going away, it's dissipating. And I kind of, I think I, after a while, I kind of figured out what's going on in my body. 
why I'm going through this. For a while, I didn't. I was like, I don't know what's going on. Is this serious? Is this cancer? I got you know. That's what you always think. That's what I always think anyway. But you, know, he start getting to that point. It was like, oh, oh. So this is it. No, no, I'm not ready to go yet. Wait a minute. I had. I haven't even cleaned up my office. I haven't. I'm doing this Swedish death cleaning. It can't be over yet. I hadn't even started. But it's weird because you start thinking about that, especially when you get to my people have, there are so many people hadn't, who hadn't even made it to my age. I was watching a documentary about the 60s because that's the decade I was born in. And it said in, this, in the year that I was born, 1962, this is my Betty and birthday year. I'm going to be 62 because I was born in 62. So that's called your Betty and birthday when you're the age that you were of the year that you were born. I'm, this is my Betty. It's a big one. I got to do something really special. My Betty and birthday. But in 1962, the average lifespan of a, of a man was 66 years old. Holy crap, that's four years from now. Really? Nowadays, it's still only in the 70s. I don't... That's scary. I... I I feel like a young man. I feel like I'm in my 20s. But man, my body. My body starts punching. So I I will tell you, I... I know I don't eat right. I don't eat well. I have a... I, I abuse my body with food... I will sit down with an entire bag of chips or an entire pizza. I will eat all of it. Seriously. I don't. And I know I shouldn't, but I do it. And I will eat fried foods every day of my life. Every meal. I don't drink water. I don't. I, I, I just, I abuse my body. And I know that I'm doing it because I go to my doctor and my doctor says, you have blood pressure that's climbing your triglycerides are are out so high i need i want to put you on medication and i get to the I, I got to the heaviest that i've ever weighed in my life so i'm what how much signs do i need uh, who who's needs to pop me in the head and say wake up i mean that's what you get that is a wake up call right all of those things and i know it and I feel it in my digestion. I feel it in my, like when I go to bed, I, I can't go to sleep because I, you know, I don't want to go into all the details, burping, coughing. <laughs> it's disgusting. But I do it to myself. I've made so many pro promises to myself. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take care of myself. And I, and I haven't. So I just keep abusing my body. I keep pushing my body. I keep doing the thing. And, you know, what's going to happen? I get a stroke. I'm going to have a heart attack. I'm just going to die. Well, my body says no. And my body says I'm going to show you a, a little bit here. Um, some previews. All right. Here's what you're going to, we're just going to kind of um, give you some... Uh, some pains. <laughs> Gonna just, I, you know, I, I'm not gonna go into all the details, but just stuff that you don't want and and just nonstop. And it, it's awful. It's a and and, it, and man, it's a wake up call. So I did a lot of research, and I was like, oh wow, I I don't want to go through all of this stuff again. I I don't need this. I uh, I'm gonna, you know, that was my um, my um, what do they call it the. Um, um, not bedside conversion. Is that right? De deathbed conversion. Yeah, there you go. Deathbed conversion. That's what it was. Um, it, I was like, I all right. As soon as I get done with all this, soon if I can get myself healthier, I'm 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 done with all. I'm not going to abuse my body anymore. And I started reading up on um, diets and and how to take care of yourself. And the number one thing everybody was just like, all right, you got high blood pressure, you're overweight. You got uh, your triglycerides are out of yes, all those things. Yes. All right. Here's your secret. Here's what I need. Here's I'm going to tell you right now. Okay. Okay. What is it? What is it? All right. What is it? High fiber. What? What? Yep. High fiber. Fiber will do it. Uh, that's it. Fi I mean, I've heard that. Right? Who hasn't heard that? That's what they say. Eat more fruits and vegetables. Why? I hate fruits and vegetables. Why? Why do that? Because it's the fiber. 
the high fiber. And I was, and so I start, I got into this little, fall into this little rabbit hole. And I start watching all these videos on YouTube about high fiber diets, one after another. Doctors, nutritionists, just video after video after video after every single one of them said fiber, adding fiber and even switching to a high fiber diet is like a miracle cure. It'll take care of all of your situations. So I'm like, really? Okay. So I started doing it. I'm on, I think I might be on a couple weeks now. Um, no, more than a couple weeks. I started in January, start doing it in January in, in the month of January. And we're not even through January yet. I've lost almost 10 pounds just doing that, doing nothing else except eating high fiber, not eating crap. They were right. That's all it took for me. And I love, not everybody does. I love all of the food. I love beans. I love fiber food. I love salads. I like all of that stuff. I say I don't like vegetables. I, there are certain vegetables I just don't like, but I love vegetable soup. I love, I just like everything about that. My wife and I, we, were, we did the Mediterranean diet for a while and I started losing a lot of weight and then holidays came up and I lost, I started gaining it all back because cookies are not on the Mediterranean diet apparently. But get back on it and your body starts changing. You start feeling better and you get your energy back. So people, that's my mission. That's where I am now. I'm, I, I don't care what you do, what you need to do. I'm high fibering it until I hit the grave <laughs> from now on. And that's okay. There's a lot of stuff I, I hear about, you know, I didn't know what do you, Metamucil, old people putting that in their drinks and on their food. I didn't know why they do it. It's for the fiber. It's, I just, I didn't know. See, that's the thing. You don't get a, a manual. You don't know how to be old. You don't even know how to be young. There's, it would be so much helpful more helpful if somebody would leave a manual. So this is why I'm telling you this. It's not about me. I don't want to go into all the stuff. But I just realize that if I want to live long, I got a, a wife who's 10 years younger than me. I'd like to live at, I don't want her marrying some other dude after me. Come on. Who wants that? I mean, if, if I go first, she, she could do it. I'm giving her permission. She won't have trouble finding you and don't line up. All right. That's all I'm saying. Don't, don't make it happen earlier than it's going to happen naturally, but she's not going to have problems. All right. She's, she's a catch. I, I'm the one that got lucky in this relationship, but I want to live as long as she lives. I, I kind of, I'd like to get, I don't, I'm okay with getting into my nineties. I've talked to so many people. They're like, what? No. But yeah, I, I'm totally fine getting in my 90s. I'll go to 100. Just let me keep going. But I'm not going to do that, shoving all that bad food and not looking at nutrition value, not taking care of my blood pressure and all that. I'm not going to do it. I'm just not. And this is the. This seems to be the key. That drinking water. I I dehydrated dehydrated myself. I don't drink w enough water. If you eat a lot of fiber, you got to drink the water, people. And then, of course, that leads to um, a lot of fun <laughs> throughout the day. Uh, but that's good. Flushes your system, you know, keeps you moving, keeps everything clean. You need to do that because if you don't do that, you got to do it with medication, right? Or you're going to have to do it with some nurse helping you out. I don't want that. But it's really weird because I, I, I think while I was going through all of this, I did something that I don't like doing and I got caught up in it and it's easy to do when you get sick, when you, when things start happening, when you get pains, especially, I don't know how people live with chronic pain. I don't know. There are people who have worse pain. I think my pain level got up to about a seven out of 10. And it lingered at six and seven nonstop for several, several days. Uh, that was hard to deal with. And then it, 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 but you know, every once in a while, you get a little reprieve, but for the most part, 
You can't sleep. It just, it just, it just stays there at that level. But there are people who deal with uh, eight, nine, and ten pain, uh, pain levels daily, constantly. I don't know how they do it. You got to have medication. I feel for people who do that. But I, I found that during this time, well, first of all, it's hard to concentrate. It's hard to come up with ideas for creative things. It's hard to come up with an idea for the show. Hard to sit down and relax and do the show when you're in pain. Um, it's very difficult to just be a creative person. It's difficult just to live your daily life, just to clean your house or to watch television or a movie or just even sleep. It's And then that just changes everything. You're irritable. You, you're tired, exhausted all the time. It takes so much out of you. But I found that uh, I often confused my body with myself. And, and it's easy to do when you're in pain. I'm, I think I'm, you know, I'm a spiritual person. I, I practice a certain amount of spirituality. Um, and I, I got into a pattern of meditating every single day for a long, some time for hours. And I was making a lot of progress. I was feeling good about it. Um, it was, it was being, I was being productive with meditation and then body pain start. And you get distracted because that's all you think about. You can't think, you can't relax. You can't, it's hard to meditate. And that's when you need it the most. But I know, I, I think I noticed myself, especially now as the pain is diminished, most pain, my pain level now is one, maybe two. Um, two at the worst, one kind of normal. And then occasionally I get like a zero and that's good. But now that I look back on it and I, and I look at how I was dealing with all of that stuff and I realize it's a lot of times I mistook my own body for myself. And I started thinking this is happening to me. This is me. This is, this is this I'm doing, I'm going through this. I'm this, I'm feeling this. I'm, this pain is me instead of realizing that the pain was actually just the body and this body is not me. One day the body will get put down and then turn to dust, right? Right now I'm something anyway, is sustaining it. But it occurred to me today, I, I was uh, going through a, a pain period and I, and I was using that pain period kind of in a, in a mode of meditation. I was meditating and feeling pain at the same time. And I was concentrating on the pain and thinking about what is it about this feeling that is bad? What is it about this feeling that I have learned throughout my life to resist? Um, this, it, it, it is a feeling. It's just a feeling. Why is it a bad feeling? And why, why my body is resist? Is there any way that I can just, what if I stop and just go, come on, pain, bring more, just do it. Or if I just really examine what I'm feeling and not, not put any kind of, uh, label on it as good or bad. I could just say that's intense. That, um, is, uh, uh, deep or that stingy or that's uh that that's a dull ache i don't know just describing it without labeling it as bad or good you could say that's intense that feels intense and then i started thinking what if what if pain you could put pain on the same level as let's say you put light as you do light and you have like really, really strong light, like staring into the sun would be like a uh, level 10 pain, right? Cause you can just nothing but light. It hurts your eyes. You're staring right into it. And then uh, zero pain maybe is just complete darkness. And then you have all that in the middle. It's not totally accurate, but we'll say it's, there's a little bit of, of a um, correlation there. And yet, what if I just look at pain as if the same way as, as if I'm looking at light? It's like, oh, that's an intense light. That's a, 
uh, less light. And, and I don't describe the light in a bad or a good way. I don't, when, when you have a lot of light, like if I go out in the sunlight, sometimes it'll hurt your eye, but I don't go, this is bad light. This is really bad. Well, this, this is really good light. Unless you're a photographer. But but most of the time, you don't um, describe. And the same with sound, although there's sound that hurts your ears a little more, and then you're in pain. But you do have intense sound, and you have less intense sound. And rarely do we qualify sound as bad or good as far as like a judgment thing as, as, as it coming into us. I mean, we'll... There are people who say bad or good to sound as far as like music, but that's really kind of a judgmental thing on the music itself, not not on the sound itself. And I think that, you know, there are some people who don't like the sound of certain things, um, chalkboards or whatever, and you could say, oh, that's a bad sound or that's a good sound. And that once again, some of those are learned. You learn them from the time you're a kid. The sound is supposed to be irritating. The sound is soothing. The same with smells, you know, I, I always feel like the smell of, um, of, uh, well, let's just say poop. I always feel like the smell of poop that we fit, we say is bad. I think that's a learned thing. I think when we're kids, when we're little babies and our, our mom's changing diaper and she's going, Oh, shoo. We hear that. And we get so it's just subtle. It goes in and we just, Oh, that, okay. That's bad. All right. That stinks. That's not good at all. And we learned that. I'm not saying we shouldn't. I'm just saying I think that's how it comes into us. It's not bad or good. I mean, if you ever watched a dog, just go right up to another dog. They don't care. <laughs> There's no smell that's bad to them. But for us, we learned that. But it's the same with pain. Feeling is the same. You got you got smelling. You got seeing. You got tasting. Right? Right? Tasty. We, we have our favorite flavors, but an intense flavor is not necessarily bad. And a, a light flavor is good. We, you know, I, I, last week Mike was make fun, making fun of me for drinking Coors beer. That's a light flavor. And you get a craft beer, sometimes a heavy flavor. What's bad and what's good? Okay, you could judge the beer. But the flavor itself is just a flavor. We just throw it in. So why is an intense feeling... We call it a pain. And I'm not saying that all pains are equal. I, I understand about what pain is and how it hurts and you get a little. But I'm just thinking, what if, what if we resist more than we should? What if we stop and we examine? And I found when I did that, when something was really hurting me, when I stopped and really examined it and looked into it, like really got into the pain, I couldn't tell the difference. I couldn't tell if it was a hurting pain or if it was just a feeling I was feeling. And people do that when they get tattoos, I've heard. They can kind of like shut off the, the thing in their head that says, ow, that hurts. They can shut it off and they just feel what's going on. They don't qualify it. They don't judge it. So maybe we could do that. Let's learn to do it. I don't know what I'm telling you. It's just something I learned. I like to tell you when I learn things, when I, tell, when I learn about myself. I like to bring it up. Okay, that's all. My Bengal spice tea is still really good. Um, what do you think? Uh, look, I don't. I'm a personal. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a kind of person who keeps a lot of things private. All right. I don't like to share personal stuff with other people. Uh, I don't normally uh, share any kind of personal stuff, like through social media or anything like that. I don't talk about this stuff to anybody. I don't usually talk about stuff like I wouldn't talk about this stuff with my wife, except it's got to a point where it's like interfering. In our relationship, I was like, look, I, you just need to know that I have pain. I'm going through a lot of pain right now. And you're going to see me wincing. You're going to see me, uh, you know, just, oh, that hurts. Oh, whatever. And you're going to wonder why. And I, I need to tell you. And she's like, okay, <laughs> you should tell me more anyway. <laughs> I need to know more about you. But I, I'm a per, I, I keep, I'm a private. I don't like, I don't like talking about anything like that. But I'm sharing it with you on the podcast because you're special and this is my podcast and I care about you and I like relating to uh, my listeners. All right. That's all I'm going to say. I would say, take care of yourself. People look into things. I'm not a preacher. I'm not going to preach to you, but check out that fiber stuff, man. If you've got some problems with like, uh, like me, 
uh, just can't control your weight. All right. Got some weight issues, blood pressure. I'm, I'm taking medication for blood pressure. And then my triglycerides so high. My doctor was just like, I got to put you on some meds here. But you know what? I put myself on my own meds. It's a natural med. It's called fiber, right? I'm doing that. I'm taking care of it. I don't need the doctor to help me out in that situation. But I want you to stick around for a long time, as long as you can. Uh, if you got anything you want to talk about, I'm here. Talk, you know, you got the numbers. You got how to get in touch with me. Um, I care about you. Uh, stay healthy. And um, I'll talk to you next week. Thanks to Koozie Mike for all those uh, great kill koozies I got on my desk now. They look great. <laughs> <laughs>